Ever wonder why you can follow a build order perfectly, but you're still stuck at 1200 elo? Like, it's the same build order that the top pros do, but you still lose with it. There's a good reason for this. Build orders tell you only where to send your villagers and what units to build. They don't provide you with details on best practices or ways to adapt in certain situations. After a certain point, there aren't too many major things that you have left to learn. A lot of the time, getting to the next level comes down to improving the things that you already know, as well as understanding some of the less intuitive parts of the game. In this video, I'll be taking you through 10 bits of knowledge that will probably be useful to you at some point if you play enough games. We'll focus on villager mechanics to increase the number of resources you bring in with the same number of villagers. First up is shift queuing to adjacent resource nodes so villagers don't walk to the other side of the camp after depleting what they're working on. This is relevant for wood, berries, and deer, but not really for gold and stone as those take so long to finish. Just look at these tests showcasing shift queuing versus not. The queued actions are obviously more efficient. Small resource gains early on are more important than later, so good thing that you have more time to set these up early as there's less to do. After the early game, it's probably not worth your time to worry about this though. I said it was also useful for deer. This is especially true because then you can always have all of your villagers collecting the same deer to reduce decay. You can even queue them to a woodline once they've finished all the deer so they don't eventually go idle. The other two ways that you'll commonly be shift queuing villagers is when sending a villager back to work after constructing a building, and when walling. When walling, just make sure that you send the villager on the inside of the wall before holding shift to queue the wall foundations. If you mess up the first command, it can be better just to right click the wall foundation on one end of the wall and forget about shift queuing this section. You just have to remember to send the villager back to work once he's done. It's common knowledge that fishing ships collect deep fish at a faster rate than shore fish, but did you know that this doesn't apply to villagers? Not many maps actually have deep fish that's accessible by villagers, but there are a few such as Golden Swamp and Mudflow. Fishing ships collect from shore fish at a rate of 16.8 food per minute, and deep fish at 29.4 food per minute. Villagers collect from both fish sources at 25.8 food per minute. For reference, villagers with handcart collect food from farms at a rate of 24 food per minute, so if you have the opportunity to take fish, you almost always should. This next tip relates to the previous one. You can drop off any food source at the dock as long as the villager carrying the food is a fisherman. This is especially useful on maps where you want to make fishing ships and you have deer near a shoreline. Once your villagers are done taking a deer, make them fishermen by right clicking on some fish. Then you can drop the food off at the dock. Saving 100 food on a mill can be super useful when making fishing ships. Unfortunately, this doesn't work for other resource types, even if the villager carrying it is a fisherman. All animals slowly lose food after they've been killed. This means that the longer it takes you to finish an animal, the more food you'll lose to decay. Small hunts such as deer and ostriches, and herdables such as sheep and ducks, all decay at a rate of 15 food per minute. Large hunts such as boars, elephants, and rhinoceroses decay at a much faster 24 food per minute. This is why it's extremely important to finish large hunt before going on to other animals. Timing the second boar to come in just as the first one is finishing is actually really important when it comes to early food efficiency. Sometimes you can't quite get it in at the right time. It's better to bring in the boar slightly early than too late. There are ways to keep the boar alive until the animal that you're working on is finished, but if you lure it too late, you'll either be forced to take some straggler trees or often an extra sheep, which will lead to extra decay and villager idle time. Some ways to keep the boar alive until the previous one is finished are Garrison the luring villager so it loses aggression with him. Then, once the boar starts walking back, shoot it again. Repeat this until it's time to finish it off. Another method is to block the boar with sheep so it can't move. This is good practice for blocking enemy villagers with your scout, so it's worth it to consider as an option. The best thing is just to bring the boar in on time though. I find that sending a villager out when the first boar is at around 160 to 180 food is best. Boars spawn at varying distances from your town center, and the more villagers you have collecting, the faster they'll finish. So if you just keep these factors in mind, you should be able to take some of the guesswork out of timing the second boar lure. If the boar is far, take it at 180 food. If you have 11 villagers on the first boar, add another 20 food and send the villager at 200 food. The important thing to remember is that you should lure the second boar before your first boar is at 160 food, at least on Arabia spawn distances. 
Since food is so precious in the early game, saturating animals as much as possible is the key to getting the most out of them. You can reasonably have 8 on small animals like sheep and deer, 10 on medium animals like cows, and 12 on large animals like boars. If you have less than these numbers, then you're losing more food to decay than you need to a lot of the time. In the case that you have multiple animals decaying at the same time, you have to factor in the decay rate, villager walk time, collection rate, and total food left. If both animals decay at the same rate, you should usually take the animal that has less food remaining first, unless one animal is small hunt and one is sheep, then take the small hunt since it harvests faster, but then you have to factor in the walk time to transfer the villagers, and maybe you can save some time teleporting using garrison, but wait, you can saturate the cow with more villagers to finish it faster. Oh man, the boar's coming in and there are still three bodies lying around, and uh oh, make that five. Anyways, instead of overly complicating things like some mathematician, you generally want to have as many villagers as you can collecting one animal, even if it means you have one just decaying with no one collecting it. Overall, you'll waste less food by taking the animals one at a time, usually. Walling is something that you'll be doing almost every game. Without walls, it can be difficult to defend while attacking the opponent. The idea behind this is that your walls buy time while you create reinforcements or bring your main army home to defend. Sometimes you can push the enemy away before they destroy your walls, so you have to decide whether to repair the walls or replace them. Each building has its own build time where hit points are added proportionally to the building's maximum HP. For example, a market takes 60 seconds to build and has 1800 HP in Feudal Age. This means that builders add 30 HP per second to it when constructing. For reference, here are the numbers for houses and castles. Now, here are the numbers for palisade and stone walls. You can see that since walls are constructed very fast and have high maximum HP, the HP added per second is quite high. In castle age, stone walls have double the HP, so their HP per second goes up to 180. The repair rate works differently. It's set to 12.5 HP per second for all buildings. The biggest advantage of repairing is that it costs only half the total building cost to repair from 1 HP to full except for town centers where it actually costs double. Any additional repairs add only 6.25 HP per second. In other words, they add half a villager's worth of HP per second. This is actually better than what an additional builder adds. Additional builders are only worth a third of the initial one. Even though the resource cost is only one wood to repair a palisade wall from one HP to full, the amount of time it takes is 20 seconds compared with seven seconds for just building a new one. If you factor in the potential resources lost from not having your villager gathering, then you can see how just replacing walls is actually cheaper than repairing them. The numbers for stone walls are even worse. 144 seconds to repair a castle age stone wall versus 10 seconds to replace it. In an actual game, you'll probably just place another layer of walls in behind rather than repairing or replacing them, but sometimes you just don't have the space. You know what? Sometimes you don't even want to place a palisade on your wall. Sometimes you want to place it on a boar. In those times that you forget about a luring villager or when you want to bring a boar in from far away, you can use the palisade trick to de-aggro the boar so it stops chasing temporarily. Using this method, you can bring in a boar from any distance without taking any damage. To do this, place a building foundation down anywhere. This doesn't have to be a palisade wall, it can be any building. Then, right-click the building foundation with your villager selected just when the boar is about to attack you, and the boar will respect building regulations and calm down. Since saving a villager early is so important, learning this trick is well worth it. There's only one thing worse than farm placements that look like this, and that's losing resources that a villager has collected because you want to send them to another resource. The obvious solution to this is to drop off the resources in the camp and then send them away. This works, but you can often skip this step. Villagers will drop off any resource at newly built lumber camps, mining camps, mills, farms, and town centers. As long as you send the villager to build the camp before it's complete, even if the villager doesn't get there before the camp is complete, they'll still drop off their resources in the stockpile when they get there. There are many uses for this trick, and there are a few that you should be doing almost every game. The most common use is building a farm with straggler tree villagers in Feudal Age. During this time, you want more farms, but you don't have the wood income to let all of your villagers build farms at the same time. You also don't want to send them to a wood line because you eventually do want them to build a farm. So, you put them on straggler trees and then every 60 wood you build a farm. The fact that you don't have to drop the wood that they're carrying at the TC first increases efficiency by quite a lot. 
Another common use is when you realize you're floating a lot of wood. You can build a mill with a bunch of farms around it, or send these lumberjacks to build a mining camp without worrying about losing the wood that they're carrying. The final example I'll give is unique to the Khmer. Since Khmer farmers don't have to drop off food from farms at a drop-off point, they can efficiently farm anywhere on the map. Since villagers drop off any resource at newly constructed farms, you can use this trick to collect a little bit of resource without building a camp or long distance mining it. You tower rushed and need 25 stone to get another town center? Send some vills and then build a farm to drop it off. Taking deer and don't want to build a mill? Stretch that deer even further by using it as fertilizer for your farms. Want to castle drop your opponent but you forgot to take stone? There's a farm for that. As you can see, there are many ways to use this trick and you're only limited by your creativity. Let's take a look at how good long distance hunting deer is versus building a mill. There are a few things to consider when deciding whether to mill or long distance deer. Efficiency of food collection, if you need the 100 wood for something else at the time, and riskiness of the location of the deer are just some of the things that we'll go over. For the collection rate, we'll be using 4 villagers to collect 4 deer with and without a mill, and the distance of the deer are at a medium distance away. We'll be using only double bit axe for ecotex. Since we're dealing with two separate resources, food and wood, we need to use villager work time as a way to compare the two methods. It takes 204 seconds to collect 100 wood with double bid axe, so the mill method starts at 204 villager work time. It takes about 25 to 30 seconds for villagers to walk out to the deer, so we add that times 4. Both methods collect around 120 food per deer when factoring in decay in 75 seconds, so we add 75 times 4 to the work time to both at this point. The food gets added after the mill is constructed with the mill method, and after the villagers return with the food with the long distance method. We can follow all the same logic for all 4 deer and come up with this timeline. The mill method brings in all 480 food in 1300 seconds with a villager work time of 1564 seconds. The long distance method brings in all the food in 2000 seconds with the villager work time of course being the same. Therefore, by milling 4 deer with 4 villagers, we gain around 436 villager work time, which is roughly worth 200 wood. So by investing 100 wood early, we gain around 200 wood later. Obviously milling gets better the more deer there are, but let's real quick look at the numbers for 4 villagers and 3 deer. We remove 500 seconds from the long distance method and 320 seconds from the milling method. The difference of 180 is reduced from the total time saved of 436, which equals 256, which is roughly equivalent to 130 wood. So with 3 deer, your investment of 100 wood into the mill only puts you ahead 30 wood. Theory is only the starting point when applying knowledge in game. Even though we concluded that milling 4 deer with 4 villagers is more efficient than long distance hunting, we did not yet consider the other advantages and disadvantages of each method. Milling means you have to commit 100 wood early for efficiency gains later. Sometimes you're better off spending that wood on other things like walls or farms, or even an archery range. If you commit to milling, this also means that you'd better actually be able to take all the deer uninterrupted, otherwise your investment will be lost. In the case that the enemy has militia and is going to kill your deer, but he doesn't have enough to fight your villagers, the best thing you can do to save your deer is to kill them before he can. It's better to have them decay for a bit than to lose the food entirely. The more deer that are decaying, the better the investment of a mill is, as the less time your villagers are taking dropping off food, the less time it will take to finish the decaying animals, leading to less food waste. This also means that if you want to send more than 4 villagers to hunt, then milling becomes better as more villager collecting means less decay. In the case that your opponent attacks your hunters with a force that can actually kill one or more of them, having a mill will allow you to drop off food before the villager dies. This can actually matter a lot if the villager was carrying 30 plus food. If you're in danger of being attacked at your hunt, you probably shouldn't have sent villagers out there in the first place though, or at least send them earlier and just long distance one or two. One final thing to consider is if you'll place farms around the mill. If the deer are in the back of your base behind walls, you'll probably want farms there at some point. This makes the investment of the mill one that you would have made eventually anyways. This is another hit against building a mill on riskier deer, but a clear advantage of building one where the deer are safe behind walls. If you want a short and easy answer, I'd say build a mill when you have 4 safe deer, otherwise taking them long distance can be preferable. Alright, enough of that math and thinking stuff. The next one is a great way to get value out of ranged units that get walled out in Feudal Age. If you're attacking a farm, it can't actually be farmed on. This means that one unupgraded skirmisher can idle a farm from a safe distance from the enemy TC. 
Reducing the opponent's food income early can lead to them having to idle their town center or getting up to castle age late. Farms have no armor, so they actually die pretty fast, even to feudal units. If you can deny farms for long enough, you might actually be able to destroy some of them. If you consider that feudal skirmishers probably won't be getting villager kills, it's nice to know a way that you can get just a little more value out of them before they die to almost anything. If you want to go for a castle in early castle age, you need to collect 450 stone in order to do so. Usually this means sending a couple of villagers to stone as early as late dark age in order to efficiently build up your stone count. Villagers collect stone at a rate of 0.36 stone per second. That's just the gather rate that isn't adjusted for walk time, so it's actually more like 0.34 stone per second. To get 450 stone, it takes two villagers 625 seconds to collect it. This means that you're not going to have enough stone for a castle right away if you just keep two on stone for a fast castle castle drop play. Let's back it up a bit and figure out how many you need to send to stone if you decide you want a castle right when you click up to castle age. You can see here that if you send 10 villagers to collect stone just as you've clicked up, you'll have the stone for a castle when you reach the next age. Of course, your villagers aren't working all that efficiently like this due to mumping and extra walk distance, so it's best to send a few villagers earlier and then have a lower maximum number of workers. You can make some reasonable estimates for how many you need to send to stone to get a castle right on castle age based on the 10 villagers timing. If you have two mining from Dark Age, then you probably only need eight on stone when you click up to Castle Age. Another way I like to estimate how many stone miners I need is using the amount of stone a villager collects on the way up to Castle Age and my current stone count. Each villager collects roughly 54 stone in 160 seconds, so if I have 300 stone in the bank when clicking up, I need seven villagers mining to reach the 650 stone the instant that I'm up. I use this reasoning with Dark Age woodcutters as well to know how much wood I'll have when reaching Feudal Age. Lumberjacks collect around 50 wood each on the way up to Feudal, so it's a really easy calculation. Using the market is the fastest way to rebalance your economy. Sometimes you really need a bit of extra gold and you're floating a thousand wood, so you sell it all. There is a fee for using the market starting at 30%, which increases by a few percent each time the market is used, up to 86%. The exception to this is the Saracens, who start at only 5% and go up to 81%. We'll be focusing on the generic sieves market for this. The question that we want to answer here is, how much food should I buy at the market when going fast castle age boom on three or four town centers? The reason why this is even a question is because you have to spend wood to make farms in order to produce food. This makes it so that your food income can only be increased slowly as each farm can only have one farmer. Compare this with sending villagers to gold. You can easily increase your gold income by as many villagers as you want to send. Since your food income is limited by how many farms you can afford, if you want more food than you can normally have, you have to use the market to buy it. This gives us two options, put more villagers on wood to afford farms, or put more villagers on gold to buy food. So it's math time. Just like in the long distance deer tip, we need to convert all resources into the time it takes to collect them. Let's be generous and use numbers for if you have horse collar and double bit axe research, but no gold mining upgrade. To make things easier, we'll figure out how long it takes for the farming method to collect 500 food and then divide by 5. This is because 500 food is exactly 2 farms worth of food. It takes 245 seconds to collect 120 wood with double bid axe, and 1470 seconds to collect 500 food with a farmer. Add these together and we get 1715 seconds. Divide this by 5 and we get 343 villager work time to collect 100 food with the farming method. For gold mining, it's a bit simpler. Villagers collect gold at a rate of 0.38 per second. This means it takes 342 seconds to collect 130 gold, which you can use to buy 100 food at the market. Hmm, it's almost as if the game is balanced. The first 100 food that you purchase at the market is effectively the same amount of villager work time as if you had collected the wood and then farmed. It does progressively get worse as the prices go up, but the fact that you can increase your gold income much faster than your food income means that buying 200 to 300 food at the market when booming is actually a good idea, since there's no way you'll have enough farms to support all of your villager production in early castle age. My verdict is that you should consider buying food until you have 18 farms for 3 town centers and 21 farms plus wheelbarrow for 4 town centers. And that's all for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye